Yes, honorable members. Yes, the honorable member for us in Michael East. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Let me put the caveat in early that I am not an Uncle Tom. I don't sleep in cufflinks. I don't sleep in bow ties. I am an ordinary Barbadian. And I was sent to Parliament by the people of St. Michael's East to do a job. And when I feel passionate about anything in my political life, it's because I am reflecting that assignment as the parliamentary representative. Now, I can't say that for everybody. And I didn't want to go down the line dealing with ethnocentric issues, but ethnocentric issues is a reality. And if you're going to make a genuine analysis of society, there are non-economic factors that we keep avoiding over and over again when we know that the society itself is bitter over these particular issues. And it might be this way because I am a student of the history of the first half of the 20th century. It is the greatest period in the history of the Western world for all black Barbadians. It has given rise to what we celebrate in the second half of the century, in 1966. But you don't get independence without a serious struggle, and without the concepts and the vision of those who preceded the actual day in 1966. And I am still probably very much captive within that framework. And um, when I listen to the news, sir, I, I see the great people of South Africa facing the same challenges that are ethnocentric, and we don't want to hide it. When people make reference to the Prime Minister in this country, certain people of a certain social type, the ethnocentric phobia goes to the front. And nobody wants to represent it because you're fear that you're fearing that you are being charged for racism in Barbados. When I go to the mental hospital and I examine who I see in the mental hospital, I know who I see. If you don't know, I'm sorry for you. And if that is, if that is supposed to be having all blinkers, well, I got a different perception of the world. When I go, well, let me make the argument stronger for you. Because you're going to say we got 90 something percent black population. I can make the argument stronger for you. Because the 90 something percent black population owns less than 5 percent of the wealth of this country. Take that. And if you go to the United States of America, the highest percentage, the issue is now one of the major social issues on the agenda in the United States of America. The percentage of blacks, although they are minority, the percentage is so disproportionate that has led to detentions in the United States of America contemporary issues. All the issues, the states is a major debate, public discussion now on the amount of blacks in the prisons, in the system, the percentage of blacks. So, how you, are you listening to news? Right? Well, you, you're saying that the majority got to be black because they're Barbadians. I'm saying the majority is black, but you know it's black working class. And if the people if we do not examine these issues, because that comes, that relates to housing too. It relates to the men I see out there at Trafalgar Square eating food every day. 
and it doesn't, I have never heard anybody feeling the passion and the sensitivity that is so necessary, that is an imperative. When I hear the acid and the passion putting up a defense for white investors in Barbados as though we as parliamentarians, we must acquiesce. Well, you made reference to specific areas of development. I remember, please, that the member make his contribution. Let, let, him, let him entertain, sir. When he, when he get a little more civil, he will continue to speak. But, sir, we have to be practical. If investors are coming to this country, the people, the people vest us with the authority to determine if the project is appropriate and if the character of the people who are invested is credible. I think that is very important. Nobody is saying that they don't like anybody because they have a Caucasian pigmentation. Nobody don't say that. That is foolishness. Nobody don't hate people because they belong to any specific religion. I don't know those people. But we face the realities in the society. And when you begin to even talk about a budget, as I bring it back to the present budget, you can't just think, and because that is the failure, that is the mistake that we've been making over and over again. You can't just think, about the economic issues, there are non-economic issues, and modern thinkers are now tapping in into socio-cultural elements in decision-making, anthropology as well, when they're making assessments of certain programs. That's the way you got a social investigation. How does the project, how structurally sound it is, The, the, the amount of money you will make from the project, you cannot exclude the fundamentals. And I'm going to make that point even stronger to you now. You cannot ex because I wrote it when you were speaking. In, in your manifesto, in your manifesto, pathway to progress. The late Prime Minister, Errol Walton Barry, a man to whom I respect, because he's the first man has given, that has given me an opportunity to be in the upper house of Barbados to defend the interests of the Democratic Labour Party. Yeah, you know I'm not a dishonest man, man. I don't know if I would have had the opportunity to be here if, I didn't have, if that opportunity was not made available to me earlier. I'm not, I'm not, then, then, yeah. He said, listen, to participate meaningfully and productively in the major institutions of the society, people have to be empowered. It is the completion of this progress of politi political educational, social, and economic empowerment that will enable the years of wood and the drawers of water to become the true craftsmen of their faith and real participate, um, participants in the progress of social economic progress. That's Barrow. That is Errol Walton Barrow. So don't tell me that we don't have a responsibility to empower our people. You don't want to be empowered exclusively by a welfare grant. Or when you die, somebody give you a pauper's burial. That is empowerment. You, you, you try to transform the... The way I said the 20th century first half is so important to me, sir, is that the men in the 20th century were absolutely clear on what they did. None of them, some of them, or most of them, did not come to Parliament. But read the writings 
of Pan Rickham. Go back and look at the work of Duncan O'Neill. Go back and look at the child labor where we were working in the cave fields. Up to 12 years old, we were work. The men had a vision. They wanted to transform the lives of our people. When I make a contribution in here, it has nothing to do with malice. I am concerned about engaging in a serious analysis, not just calling out figures and saying $160 million would derive as a consequence of the levy and believe that that makes me bright. I want a surgical analysis of where we are. And if I voice an opinion, I really hope that the Minister of Finance or the Prime Minister or some other minister on that side will hear something of value in it, however limited my ability might be in these, these matters. But I certainly know that it is much bigger and greater than theirs. We have a serious issue where we are at present with all that is happening around the world. It is a challenge to small government, governments. A challenge. I got here this morning, I heard a minister who was responsible for the social services. Poisonous! By implication, I probably spend 29 minutes out of the half hour attacking an institution. And the founders of that institution were born within this institution. Were they wise then or no? That they in the grave. We don't want to waste time on that. There will become a time when you will have to defend a lot of things that you're seeing in here. And bet your life I will be in Station Hill. And I'll be down in this village for you. I'll be down in there. You're going to answer some serious questions. I went in there already more than once. Your party caused me to be in there. And your party caused me to stand up in the dock in the magistrate courts. I know all of that. No, the leader of the opposition came to my rescue. Sir, we have some important issues. I really hope that the, and I said this more than once in here, because I would like to see us reach a stage where we could begin to examine these important issues in Barbados without believing that there's any personal <coughs> attack. I think they had. I think they had. Without any person <laughs> attack on any person. Because when I leave here, I don't have to get involved in any, any theater. When I leave here and I go outside, I talk to everybody. If I want to drop home, I can ask anybody and like this to drop me home. And I live that way. But if I have an idea or a body of ideas that I want to put on the table, especially in this place, this chamber, I believe that as long as I operate within the framework of the rules and regulations of this chamber, I will not ha allow any form of restraint, constraint, or anything to stop me from expressing my views. I don't have to be vulgar. I don't have to tell you that the Democratic Labour Party is the worst party in the history of Barbados. I will do that when the time comes. But not in here. Not in here. I cannot do it. So, I have the, 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 this is also a credibility, credibility issue too, you know. So, when people make commitments, vague promises in here, the reason why some people hold reservations is because we have heard 
some sincere tones and words already. In and out of Parliament. I, I have here one or two quotes. People giving special commitments that there will be no people felt passionate that they should not reduce the number of students within the University of the West Indies. And they gave, a, they gave commitments that there be no reduction in the numbers in Barbados. That everybody should have access to free tertiary education. And the people believed it. The people believed it. And then what occurred? So when people hold doubts, you don't get angry. If you know that you did something sincere in your heart, you come back and explain, look, at this specific time, I said this because such and such a thing is the case. You did it with the workers at NCC. They have to end up fighting in a tribunal. And all like no, the problems are still the same. It happened during the general election. When you said that there'd be no, that the Barbados Labour Party wanted to put the transport board in the hands of private ownership and the people believe you. But if eight years elapsed and everything that you said with conviction and sincerity at the moment in history turned out to be the very opposite to what you said then, you can't expect the society not to have reservations and question your credibility. And although at a specific time in your history, you can hold a view, you're only human, you can hold a view because the dynamics around you at this specific time were favorable to those views. Some people express them, but don't believe them. But we believe them. So what I'm saying to you, don't have doubts about the judgment of ordinary people because you will pay for it. And as, as I was saying, in, in South Africa today, the ANC finds itself on the run, although still very popular, after breaking away from the apartheid system, a party led by Nelson Mandela, fight itself in the municipal election, fighting against the ANC, the people coming up against the ANC. You know why? Because when, when they receive the liberation on Nif Mandela, their expectations were high. They thought there would have been significant economic transformation in the lives of that country. When the Democratic Labour Party came to office, and power for me, in 2008, the expectations of the people were high. Nobody expected that we would have been in this state that we are in now. Do you have to explain it? You can't get so arrogant to tell me, the one person that represents about 19 to 20,000 people in my constituency, that I cannot express a view about investment in this country. But I am the voice of these people and these people want to speak and speak through me. I have issues that they're, what is happening? And nobody is speaking on them. 
I've had issues, I have issues in my constituency that I want to hear the voices of the minister because I am terrorized and the people are terrorized by public servants that they must be moved. They didn't even have enough money to build a good house. Never owned a piece of land in their life before. And now that they build the little houses on the bell, the town planner say, you have to move. You have to move. This, this perception of absolute power and abuse at the highest level. And the town planner need to know or the, rather the people need to know because I believe in the synthesis of government and people. Not the synthesis of government and corporate Barbados. I don't belong to that school of thought. Government and the people, you can't go around. And that's what Mr. Barber was saying there. You can't go around as long as you establish that relationship with the people and be guided by the concerns of the people. And that's why he said the first half of the 20th century is so important. <laughs> the bell. I've been discussing this matter over and over. I just ask for public statement, whatever the views are, even though you tell me about the views behind closed doors, I don't want no secrets. Talk to the people. I want to know if a reverse osmosis plant will be made available to us in St. Michael's East. That is what I want to hear about. My politics is government and people. Probably one of the most densely populated areas in urban community is Lake <coughs> Village. Certainly you just got going at the welfare department, the minister of social, the welfare department, and you just see Lake Village, Lake Village, Belgali, all, all around there, same area. People can't have access to water. I would thank the minister in recent times for making available at two strategic, two strategic points, two standpoints. I asked for it when I was here. And I went with a minister walking. He carried me walking all around the place and then he began to question people on where you, where you put your houses here and there and all of that. The minister of the government placed two standpipes, one to the eastern side and one to the western side, because he is aware that if you don't study these dynamics, people end up with all types of diseases, including salmonella, because there's not enough water to bathe and to cook and to wash your hands on a regular basis. So he understood that. But I need to know something now about the source plant. And I've been told that I can't, you can't just put in a reserve of a reverse of um, osmosis plant without putting in a source plant as well. In order to cut one must complement the others. Well, I am not versed in the technical and scientific knowledge to understand clearly. All I want to do is to make sure you get the contamination or the bacteria out of the water and allow people to be able to sleep at night comfortably. I have heard all kinds of stories about land available at $5 a square foot. And I send them people down to NHC and they got the land. Nobody can get the word. I got land available. <laughs> well, I hear they get Shafet land, all these things going on. But they ain't got a land for these people. But people threaten them all the time with bulldozers. Threaten them with bulldozers. They did it to you. It's just, it's just that you don't, you, 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 you don't have a memory that precedes 2008. 
But in Station Hill, it's called it, it is called the Bell Line. Once was called it was called Bellevue. Once was called Waterford Estate. What? But I'm, I'm saying, I said it was wrong then, and it is wrong now. I don't care who's the government. I don't care who's the prime minister. I don't care who's the leader of the opposition. It is wrong. I am not going to entertain anybody, including the town planner, coming in my constituency and treating the people that I represent in that manner. Uh, I'm I'm just water. You have five minutes in which to conclude. It is not just water, sir. It is about not having access to loans. They can't. They can't qualify. They don't own the land. They don't have any money. They don't have any jobs. And there's no, no, no hope in sight in the circumstances. I heard a lot of talk earlier, sir, about small businesses. Go down at Pelican Village. Go down at Pelican Village. I heard the last the minister who preceded me talking about small business. Walk down at Pelican Village now and you see ghost town. I don't like that bogus logic. The people cannot pay the BIDC their rent. But I expect you, sir, true you, sir, to apply yourself in a meaningful way to the sensitivity, the sensitivity that I talked about just now. Not you and business. Not how much money you're going to make available to the selected few. Not $10 for, for, for pensioners. You really believe that pensioners that work so hard in a country like this at this point in our history deserve to get a $10 increment? And everybody silent on it, and everybody conform to a, a conventional approach to a, a little um, in, a, a minor increase in pension. Ten dollars. I will push it up at least. I will compromise at twenty. I will compromise at twenty. By that time, the, 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 the cost of living is running away, and he was able to manage the economy, not like how you handling it. And they still had, they had access to the hospital. And they had access to the university for the children. We, 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 have, we have to treat people in a, in, 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 a, in, a, in a positive way. So you will use that as an excuse all your life for all the things that you're doing. You don't want to, you don't even want to pay you, Cal. But you paying swim, swim water. I pick up the trajectory, you know. I pick it up all the time. I don't know that's because of my perception. You're paying swim, swim orders. You're burning for us a, a five mechanics from out of Trinidad. To work at, Man at Mangrove. You say that they got the mechanics in Barbados competent enough to do the work that these men came in to do. And the men fix one bus yet. I got mechanics, I could give you 20 mechanics tomorrow morning, I got pot spoon, I got a whole set of people in the Ivy that can fix diesel, cursing oil, gasoline, whatever you want. I have people that are... <laughs> I have people... I, 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 anything you bring, electrical, anything you can have them. You know how... You know how... Jada. You know how John I got the trajectory I pick him up. You know how John going down to the immigration department. I say he can't get access to competent carpenters in Barbados. Man, we, we had competent carpenters that go all back to Hurricane Jenny. Huh? I know who that. We got competent we got competent carpenters around here. So we got a vocational, what do you call it? Vocational training board. You got the polytechnic. Well, something got to be wrong with the skills of the people who imparting the 
these skills to the students at these institutions that they can't fix up. A bus that is over 10 years old with a special contemporary technology being available. It's an old, bu old bus. Well, you've probably been saying they read it too. We have to apply ourselves. If you keep on the, if you keep on track, if you keep on track, respect philosophical guidance. You see this top down, see this top down thing that everybody want to run in Barbados. I call myself the brightest people in Barbados because I got a degree in economics. I don't remember. I a lot of Your time is expired. I'll give you one minute to wrap up. Okay, sir. I, I personally believe, sir, that we have, and that's why I probably speak about the first half of the century, 20th century, because individuals of that time had a connection with the people, understood what were the issues that we need to address. You can talk about all the other things, but you cannot have a budget where you exclude these concerns, where you exclude the concerns of the small business people in a meaningful way. Don't tell me $50 million available and all that. I see all that with fun access, all of these institutions already, and people can get a say. The bureaucracy is so complex, and those institutions could not get a say. It served no use in the system. I, I would love, sir, if you would even give me 10 more minutes. Not today. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Sir, I want, I, want to, I want to thank all members of Parliament for at least allowing me to express my views with a certain amount of freedom. Um, I expect the reactions on occasion. I also want to thank you, sir, for obliging me with the opportunity to speak to you. So thank you very much, sir.